G'day, I'm George. G'day, I'm Abe. Nice one. Uh, dive deeper into the series and follow The Chosen wherever you get your podcasts and on the Hope 103.2 YouTube channel. Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Laura. And this is Following the Chosen. We are back, Laura, yes. for season four. We've checked out episodes one and two. They're at cinemas around, around the, world. the world. My goodness me. And we got to see episode one on the big screen. And it would be great to talk about how there is one scene that both of us in particular stood out to us. We weren't even sitting next to each other and sharing notes. Separately, it stood out to us. But we should also have a bit of a chat about how that's almost like a side note mm. in an episode that is one of those chosen episodes. If you've watched any of the other seasons before now, and if you haven't, you should rush back. And one of the things you will notice about The Chosen is that often Jesus doesn't show up until later on in the piece. And here we are, season one, season four, episode one, mm -hmm. Laura, and Jesus doesn't show up for a while. It's more about it John the Baptist. Yeah, because this is the part of Scripture where we do learn about John the Baptist, Baptist a little bit more about him, and they kind of overlap when John the Baptist was born and then also present day and as John the Baptist is, spoiler, getting beheaded. So it's a pretty serious episode to start the new season with, but it takes us into a new era for the disciples. Is this the death that has been talked about in all the promo stuff about The Chosen, the interviews that you got to do with yeah. The Chosen cast and crew. Go and check those out on Hope's YouTube channel if you haven't seen them already. They are cracking. But in amongst all that discussion about season four mm. and there's talk about a death, is this the death? I wonder because I've. it is a death, yes, yes. But I think there's more deaths to come. So I don't know if this is going to be the death that they were trying to tease, but it's certainly in there with it. But the story of this episode is about so much more than just that because it's about the impact that John the Baptist passing has on the disciples and then when Jesus does eventually step in how he's dealing with the grief of having lost John the Baptist but then how he's helping the disciples process that grief too like it's, it's a really big emotional start to the season even though we don't get Jesus until later on in the piece that's right there's a lot going on and it does feel like a big setup episode which you mm. tend to get at the start of most TV seasons but one that's setting up for the kingdom that John the Baptist was preparing the way for, that Jesus yeah. is bringing in. You get that strong sense here that the work that John did to announce Jesus coming mm. must be pointing towards something massive because John was willing to go to his death to serve that purpose. And yeah. he seems to, at least as it's presented in The Chosen, as it's presented in Scripture, mm. seems to recognize what he's here to do, his role tasked by God, and what that is going to usher in. And that's a pretty good start for a TV series. Mm, it, 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 yeah, absolutely. Like when you're thinking of sort of the pilot episode of a new season, you want it to be something that makes you want to keep watching. And absolutely, like they've done that with this. And even that anticipation of when is Jesus going to arrive on screen, I found that it was kind of symbolic because in the same way that we've spoken about John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus, this episode in itself, the first part is preparing the way for Jesus then to arrive. But then from a spiritual perspective too, as I was sitting in my chair, enjoying everything that was happening, you know, in I the was cinema. in the cinema, my comfy recliner chair, like how lovely. Um, it was this interesting thing because I was enjoying the story that was presented to me and the disciples and everything that was going on with their lives. I was totally engaged with it. But I did also have this sense of anticipation and almost like an eagerness. I wanted to know, like, what's, what's Jesus up to? When is Jesus going to be present? And it felt, I don't know if it's too much to say, but it felt oddly spiritual because it's like in the Christian life, that feeling of, you know, desiring the presence of God, like desiring that kind of connection with Jesus. It was present even in the way this this episode rolled out, this excitement that at some point Jesus is coming. It felt, I don't know, like it worked really well within the episode to make you feel that from a spiritual point of view as well. That is cool because my spirit wasn't doing the same thing that yours was at the time. And now I feel rebuked because I feel like it should have been. <laughs> no. I had that that experience more in the second episode, which mm. we'll get onto in the next episode of Following the Chosen. And if you haven't already, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Also, drop us a comment. Let us know about The Chosen, all the previous seasons leading up to season four that we're in now. We would love your thoughts. Let us know in the comments. We will get back to you in a future episode. Laura, so I didn't have this like big spiritual awakening or anything in episode one. I was actually disappointed is not the right word. Underwhelmed is not the right word. I enjoyed it, but I but in 
contrast with the epi- the next episode, much I was much more into the next episode. I think mm. one of the reasons is, and before we get to this scene that stood out to both of us, is that some of these side stories that have been going on in The Chosen, they converged here and I just wasn't that into it. I'm not not into it. I'm just not as into it as some of the other content and characters that are going on. Right. So like the oil business and the wedding that's coming, but they're, they're nice and, and the contrast in celebrations in this episode was very mm. good compared with what's going on for John but yeah it didn't cause my spirit to be all a flutter isn't that interesting because I, w- I don't know if I would describe my spirit as being a flutter but <laughs> I you're right moments, you didn't say no that. <laughs> but it's okay for you to say that but I feel like it, it it occurred to me a few minutes in this was actually one of the first episodes where I was really seeing the disciples as characters and this show as one with its own story its own time period that it was set in and not just a reflection of scripture like we've we've absolutely absolutely said it before that what the chosen is doing is so unique and it is dramatizing the life of Jesus and his disciples and and showing us who they could have been beyond the bits that we see within scripture but I'd never consumed the chosen as a viewer like another drama series or another entertainment program I'd watched it with that biblical lens but I found myself for the first time maybe because I was sitting in a cinema it was the first time I watched it as being a show about characters set in the first century and not something that was just absolutely biblical I take your point about the show being a show in and of itself. I'm start, I've am I'm been thinking that, I think, through season three and now into season four. I'm definitely there. Although one of the things I really did like about this episode was some of the way it uses what's in scripture to bring it to light or to life afresh mm. for me. I'd not thought to contrast the birth of John the Baptist with the death of John the Baptist. Yeah. And I liked the way that it was interwoven how what happens in King Herod's court and the build up to that. And there's a dance routine in The Chosen. If you've <laughs> yeah. been waiting for the dance routine in The Chosen, here it is. I really quite like that. Uh-huh, a lot. It's great. It's not a crowd. It's like not a um, you know, dance crowd or anything like that. It's a beautiful moment and, and it's very athletic. And then what it <laughs> leads to is not so much. So I was really appreciative of the way those bits of scripture were brought together in this episode and made me think more about who John the Baptist was and what he came to do. Hmm. But what this episode came to do, I reckon, Laura, is this scene that just crops up in the lives of the disciples where they're washing laundry and it's Simon the Zealot and Judas. And clearly Judas at this point, even more than the last season, is being set up to become, quote unquote, Judas, Mm -hmm. as in Judas the betrayer. (laughs) Like you can see that happening and they're really, they're starting to ramp it up a little bit. But also why that's happening, you know, the the little kind of thoughts that start to weave their way into how he thinks and sees the world, that is to me one of the great ways that they begin to set up how he becomes Judas the betrayer as a as a human right like we understand how does somebody go from point A to point B and you start to see that develop in him over the laundry and yeah. so it's two, <laughs> two blokes in the first century doing their laundry and the contrast between some of the things that Judas is raising about why are we even doing this ourselves we should be paying somebody else to do it so we can do the more important ministry work that mm. Jesus has assigned us to and that Jesus himself should be doing And Simon constantly having arguments and responses against that. But I really liked how the flow of that conversation was this strong contrast between Judas and some of the things he's saying are not wrong, Mm. but not even unreasonable. It's just Simon was questioning his motivation for that and also questioning whether he had Judas picked up on the teaching of Jesus and the heart of what Jesus is saying. So Mm. rather than it being an issue of whether we should spend money on this or that, Simon talked a lot about the generosity of Jesus, for example, To Judas and to us, are we getting the message that Jesus has come to share about generosity of who Jesus is, of who God is, but also Mm. how we are to be to each other? And in those couple of minutes there on screen, I thought the screenwriters, the actors, everybody did a wonderful Mm. job of bringing together, almost out of nowhere, a reminder to listen to Jesus' teachings. Are you really listening and responding? And Mm. also pointing to what they're about rather than trying to think of all these different things they could be about or yeah. should be about or what I, the way I think it should be. And it was interesting to me that scene really spoke of how in some instances we can have beautiful arguments and they can be quote unquote true. You know, there can be a rightness to what we're saying in terms of Judas as somebody who has a real understanding of economic uh, sort of proficiency, right? He's really, really diligent with his managing of money and what would be the most efficient use of time would be let's get someone else to do this laundry, let's get somebody else to do this sort of day-to-day stuff so we can be about the ministry etc there is a genuine relevant 
logic to that that makes sense. But then, yes, like Z's character is kind of saying, you haven't really heard what's been said in this. Why are we here and what are we doing? And I, I like that aspect of this scene where it kind of speaks to and addresses that part of us that we can have a really good logical argument for something that actually takes us away from the true heart of the Christian faith or, you know, what we are meant to be doing with our day in, day out kind of lives. We can come up with an idea that allows us to do what we really want to do, which is in Judas' instance, he doesn't want to do the laundry. He wants to be about the ministry and financial management. You can have something that sounds good that kind of gets you out of doing things the way you don't want to do them, but that's not necessarily going to be the the ideal best way Jesus is intending for us to live our lives. But then also something in this conversation that really stood out to me was this back and forth about what you're supposed to do with the skill sets and wisdom that you have that you that you had perhaps before you met Jesus. You know, if you're somebody who becomes a Christian and starts to follow Jesus later in life, presumably you've had an entire career, you've got an entire skill set, an entire way of seeing the world that you're then reevaluating in the light of everything you've learned through scripture and from the example of Jesus. What do you do with that? Like so if many people go through that. Right? Like if you're a high-flying business person and then you're suddenly in this, you know, um, kind of culture of generosity and that doesn't think of money first necessarily in all instances, what do you do with that way you know how to manage money effectively? Like there are definite pros to the knowledge you have and then translating that into a different kind of mission. But I really like that wrestle that Judas seemed to have because I think it can relate to many of us where like what do we do with our human abilities and wisdom in light of what we understand from a spiritual perspective as well. And that, Laura, was episode one of The Chosen. And following The Chosen is back for the whole season four Join us every episode. We will dive into deep discussion about what goes on. We would love to hear from you as well. We would love to know what you're thinking about this season, the other seasons, all the other characters, all the moments, the things they add, the things they don't. If you're on YouTube, drop us some comments below. We will get back to you in an upcoming episode. We would love to engage with you on The Chosen. If you're joining from The Chosen via podcast, subscribe wherever you grab your podcast, Spotify, Apple, hopepodcast.com.au and we'll see you on the following The Chosen next time. Hi, I'm Noah James. Dive deeper into the series by following The Chosen wherever you get your podcasts and on the Hope 1032 YouTube channel.